name is Brandy White, and I'm a PhD candidate in the lab of Forest Rower, who discovered that the decline in coral reefs is microbially mediated. When you look at a degraded coral reef, they get covered in algae that overgrows on them. This collapses the coral reef ecosystem and turns them into a flat algal mat. And we found out that microbes have something to do with this by putting coral and algae in a tank separate from each other with their associated microbes, by which I mean mostly bacteria and viruses. The bacteria are in blue and the viruses are in pink. And they are totally healthy here unless you open up a membrane between the two. And this membrane does not let the bacteria and viruses pass, but it lets other smaller materials pass, like sugars and oxygen. And then the corals die 100% of the time, unless you add antibiotics. So we know that the microbes are doing something here. But it's interesting because these are the same microbes that were there the whole time. When we look closer at these microbes, we see that the bacteria have gotten larger in this process and that the free-floating viruses have disappeared. We see this phenomenon also on coral reefs in nature. And we also see that the bacteria are expressing genes for alternative carbon metabolism. So what we think is going on is actually mediated by bacteriophage. Bacteriophage are a virus that is specific to bacteria. So when, when the bacteriophage finds its host bacteria, it injects its genetic material along inside with the microbe's own genetic material. The viral DNA integrates into the DNA of the microbe. And then the virus uses the bacteria's own DNA replication machinery to make many, many copies of itself. Eventually, these copies exit the cell, killing the cell in the process, and releasing more phage, that's a dead cell, into the environment. This is called the lytic cycle. But many, bacteri many bacteriophage can choose to delay this section of the process and stay integrated into the genome of the bacteria and replicate with the bacteria at least for as long as those conditions are favorable and then it continues the cycle. Now, in this scenario called the lysogenic uh, life cycle, the bacteriophage does not want the bacteria to die because then it dies too. So it wants to protect that bacteria cell, and it does that by expressing genes that aid in the survivorship of the cell. These genes make, it, make cells um, grow faster than its competitors or may also make virulence factors that do things like inhibit competitors or inhibit predators, but can also cause disease in larger organisms, such as coral, but also fish, birds, humans, uh, you name it. So we're interested in preventing this process or at least understanding it and being able to control it. And it turns out that most pathogens, which are bacteria that cause disease, have a bacteriophage in their genomes. So we're interested in understanding what cues a bacteriophage uses to choose life cycle. Now in the laboratory, most of the research that goes on to um, understand this process uses things like UVB radiation. It's uh, like the radiation the sun um, emits on the earth, but the um, ozone layer prevents. 
uh, from hitting the earth, which is good because it destroys DNA. It also can force this process, but this is not a uh, condition that occurs naturally uh, in the environment. So my research is looking at actual environmental cues that are most likely, we think, um, involved in this decision-making process, which are involved in metabolism. Specifically, I'm looking at molecular oxygen and dissolved organic carbon. And you can think of that as controlling the bacterial cell's uh, ability to uh, choose, or the ability to um, use different metabolic pathways to use that organic carbon to make energy for itself, to maintain cellular homeostasis, to grow. And by increasing or decreasing the molecular oxygen and the organic carbon, we can ask whether we can control this life cycle decision in a complex natural microbial community. And what we look for is then the number of viruses, both free viruses, here we do that with microscopy, and uh, viruses embedded in the genome, like this one, we do that with bioinformatics. But we also want to look at the metabolic shift that we saw um, both in the lab and in the environment. And there are no tools to do that with a complex natural microbial community. So we had to make our own. I am also engineering as part of my PhD a ultra-sensitive microcalorimeter to instantaneously and completely non-invasively measure heat changes that are associated with shifts in metabolism to get uh, signatures of heat and tell us what the full picture is. This research is a completely novel way of approaching coral reef decline and promises to make real progress forward in coral reef restoration. Thank you.